Hello and welcome to day number two of Superbase launch week, the fifth. Yesterday we launched the CLI into stable version 1.0 along with the beta release of the admin API which powers it. If you haven't checked out that video yet, I recommend you give it a watch, there's a link in the description. And today we're expanding on some of those CLI changes and looking at what this enables for the brand new version 2 of Superbase JS. Koppel and I sit down to chat about what's changed, how this enables even better type safety across your entire app, and a whole bunch of quality of life changes that this release enables. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to day two of launch week number five. So today we are talking about the cool new things that are coming in Superbase JS v2. Uh, so if you don't know me, my name is John Myers. I'm a developer advocate from Superbase. And who are you? I'm Paul or Kiwi Koppel, um, uh, the CEO and one of the co-founders of Superbase. I thought I'd seen you somewhere around. <laughs> I think we've done a stream together actually one time. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, awesome. Okay, so what has what has been launched as part of today in Superbase JS v two, or what is Superbase JS v two? So Superbase JS v two is probably, as it sounds, it's kind of the next um, uh, iteration of our JS libraries. And mostly we focus this time on sort of quality of life improvements. So V1 was all about just getting it out there, getting the feedback. And then from this, we've learned quite a lot about how people use the library. And from this iteration, we've really focused on what is the feedback that we've received? What are the things that people get stuck on and trying to improve the sort of quality of life uh, of the usage of the library? I can imagine having all of those different libraries kind of developed at different rates by potentially different teams within Superbase. Uh, it would be very easy for them to diverge quite a lot. So how does Superbase JS v2 bring that all back? How does it add in some consistency? Yeah, well, the teams, uh, luckily, we're a fairly small team at this stage. So um, we've got some people working on multiple libraries, but mostly we just got together. Um, we looked at the differences between them and um, we just really uh, focused on making everything uh, the same developer experience across all. So there's been a big push for the past few months to get this one out uh, across all teams. And uh, yeah, we're really happy with the results. As a good example of this across uh, all the libraries, now we return a data object always um, so that you, the developer, know, know that there's always going to be uh, data returned. Previously, we had things like if you were requesting a signed URL for your storage, we might just return that individual item. But um, to make it consistent, we'll just return the signed URL inside the data object and that makes um, it very easy, especially for um, uh, wrapping all the libraries. Uh, if you're doing something at the top level of your app, um, you can always expect both data and error to be returned. Nice. And I guess just like discoverability, if you always know that data is coming back, that gives you something to console log out at least and see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're like me, I always just slam a, a console log on the data to see, see, see what's yeah. getting returned. <laughs> Who needs perfectly crafted docs when you've got console <laughs> log? So I heard TypeScript support was also quite a big focus of this, this new release. So how are we improving that TypeScript story? Yep. Um, the team have focused really heavily on TypeScript support uh, this time around. We've made all the return types that we've... Um, added uh, and all the types in general much stricter but importantly for you the developer we've also added typescript support so we actually previously had this in our libraries um, you can see here in the example that um, previously you could import definitions which were generated from your superbase api but you would have to insert them on each method under the from uh, this is a bit annoying because then you have to literally pluck out um, the the definition itself on each uh, on each method so we rethought how we could do this uh, actually thanks to some of the ideas in the community and we came up with the v2 which is basically just inserting it right when you create the client and then from that point on every method within um, superbase will have type support. So you'll be able to see when you do a select, you'll be able to see which 
uh, which columns you can select when you do your matching, when you do the equality filters, all of this will have type support. And that is so cool. Yeah, right. So you can just kind of set it once and then completely forget about it. And every single time you're, uh, you're querying data, you can kind of like, again, that discoverability, like you can kind of just press uh, from or, or look at your data object that you get back and say data dot and then look at uh, all of the fields that are actually available on there. That is yep. super cool. So exactly. where does this definitions file come from? Yeah, that's another one. If you uh, watched yesterday's video, um, we have released our CLI v1, and you can actually generate these definitions from your database directly. Now, this is also a sort of quality of life improvement because previously you would have to generate them directly from the API, which lost some of the typiness um, between the translation layer between the database and the API. Now, because we generate them directly from the database, we can do much more granular um, details around what you can receive back on the inserts, what you receive back when you select, what you receive back when you update. So it's it's just a, a far superior developer experience. That is awesome. So auth is another super important part of Superbase and definitely Superbase JS. Uh, have we done anything to improve auth with this release? Yes, quite a lot. Um, we have made several improvements to the auth library. Um, so some of them are worth pointing out because they're breaking changes. Um, for example, here you can see the sign-in method um, previously would take uh, both an email and password. And if you left the password off, we would assume that it was a uh, passwordless login. Now we've made it explicit. So sign in with password, sign in with passwordless, sign in with OTP. Uh, each one is a different uh, method. So this is a breaking change worth taking note. But the, um, the quality of life improvement here is that you have much better typing. So when you're actually using these methods, it'll become a lot clearer what parameters you're supposed to pass. It'll catch these errors if you're passing or forgetting to pass some items. As part of this sort of um, auth redo, we've overhauled the whole JS library. And so we're, um, we've made a lot of improvements. And I, I think a lot of people got tripped up with uh, maybe the applications getting logged out or um, something's not working between tabs. So we've managed to... Um, yeah, completely redo the library so that um, it, this no longer happens. It's just a, a, a much stronger auth experience. Okay, so that, that seems pretty simple. We just need to do a bit of a find and replace um, to use those specific functions for each of those auth strategies rather than that kind of one polymorphic uh, function for sign in. Uh, are there any other breaking changes that we should know about? Yeah, there's probably one... Uh, really important one worth calling out, um, which I think you're quite familiar with um, since you <laughs> chat to many of our customers is the the sort of returning data. So this is, I, I think, as you'd know, how you would previously insert, um, you, you know, insert your data. And when you do this insert, it would actually select back the entire row um, for you as well. Um, so this is a problem when you're when you have maybe RLS enabled as you should, uh, and you've written a policy to be able to enable that action of being able to insert data, um, but then you still get a row level security policy violation, and you're not sure why. So what's really going on here in in the the old version v1? What do we get back here when we do an insert? Yeah, so in v1, uh, actually, what we were doing was under the hood, we were doing both an insert and a select at the same time. And if you had row level security turned on, but you hadn't actually added a policy for your select, then it would throw an error saying that, um, or, or it would not return any data depending on what your row level security policy had. And this became very confusing for people who turned on row level security, but then forgot to add their RLS policy. Uh, so we decided that we should just make it much more explicit and for V2, um, you simply need to add the select at the end of the, uh, at the statement. Okay, so if you leave off that select, this would just be the same as 
Uh, I believe with V1, we could pass an additional like config object saying that we wanted to uh, return, I think it was minimal, um, and that wouldn't actually give you back those rows of data. Uh, so if we were to leave select off here, that would be that kind of default behavior. But if we do want to get those rows back that have been inserted, then we just need to chain on this select. Is that right? Exactly, exactly. And it's worth right. pointing out as well, um, a small improvement here is if you actually don't want the data, uh, you would have to add um, uh, returning minimal, as you point out. But um, by doing this without the select, you have a much greater performance as well, because it doesn't need to select the data after it's inserting. So if you actually don't need the data, then don't. Uh, we recommend not adding the select statement. Yeah, I imagine yeah, if you were bulk inserting a whole bunch of rows, uh, that could be quite the non-performant query uh, even if you're just chucking away data after that, you're not even using the the inserted data. Um, yeah, you might not know that that is still doing a massive select query and a massive like transfer of that over the network. Um, yeah, that is a much nicer default. So given launch week is such a special hush-hush time with such big features coming out every day, are there any sneak peeks you could give us for what's coming up in future days but related to Superbase JS? Yep. Actually, if you stick around for Thursday, um, you'll find that you can actually use some additional functionality of the Superbase JS libraries. Um, I'm sure, actually, if you poke around in the real-time JS uh, part of the library, you might find some some neat new features that um, that probably you can't use yet, um, but you will be able to use them on Thursday. Uh, so I guess. Uh, We'll hold off for this take to, to announce some of those ones. But maybe related to real time, maybe, maybe. <laughs> this is one of the, uh, the, the I, guess, I guess, benefits, but one of the things that makes uh, launching like secret features very difficult with a full open source project is uh, <laughs> yeah, anyone can poke around and find them, but makes it much more fun, little Easter eggs all over the place. Exactly. Uh, so if people want to get started with Superbase JS v2, uh, where might they look? Yep. So just under our docs, um, you'll see in the same place that you went previously, uh, we've just added a V1 and V2. So you can still see uh, if you're using V1 on the docs for the previous libraries. And then by default now, we'll show uh, the V2 libraries. So just go to superbase.com slash docs. And under the reference guides, we've got every single function method um, documented. We've also... Uh, inside those v2 docs we've got the full release notes and the upgrade guide and all the breaking changes everything that we discussed here and also uh, a few other things that you might want to take note of awesome well i am super excited to give it a go and see what i can build with superbase js v2 thank you so much for taking the time couple thanks john thanks again for joining us for another awesome day of superbase launch week number five to make sure you don't miss any of the exciting things coming this week, double check you're subscribed to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash C slash Superbase. Make sure you click that little notification bell to hear about all of the other awesome stuff we're doing. Also, give us a follow at twitter.com slash Superbase. We'll be updating the superbase.com slash launch week page each day with helpful links to get started. And if you're excited to try out these new features, why not build your dream project and submit it as part of the Superbase hackathon happening right now. Check out the Superbase Hackathon blog linked in the description for more details and head on over to discord.superbase.com to join our community. A bunch of the team will be hanging out in the Hackathon channels throughout the week as we build out our own projects. If you don't know where to get started with your Superbase project, make sure you join us for a very special happy hour live stream this week where we're going to build an entire app from scratch in two hours. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.